So until now, we didn't really know when to start new seasons, but we decided this year, <laughs> season four starts at the Tampa RV Show. Let's go. So actually the first day of the Tampa RV show doesn't start actually at the show. It starts at the RV content creators parking lot. Parking lot. And so we're here with a bunch of other content creators. And uh, I'm sure you'll see some faces of people you recognize that we recognize. And maybe they'll recognize us. But let's take you inside. Hey, hey there, YouTubers. Hey. Did you guys get chauffeured? We did. Yes. Yeah. Wow, the Uber. I think we passed right by your place. This you morning. have five stars. Oh, yeah? yeah. You're going to give me five stars for five the Uber ride. Ride. For the Uber ride? We're yeah. Ubering. I would rethink that. I, we I, were I've ridden okay. with him before. <laughs> I wouldn't give him a five. <laughs> <laughs> So we just wanted to summarize yesterday. So that really wasn't the first day of the Tampa show. It was the day of the RV content creators uh, meet up, get together. And it's just really cool to see other people that do this. I mean, we met, you met some people that you've not met before, right? Any? Yeah, there were a ton of people I, I didn't even know. I mean, I like I didn't recognize them as someone we follow I should say. just a bunch more YouTube channels and Instagrammers and Facebook people people like that but I think what's so really cool and those of you that are in the RV community know that RVers tend to be very very helpful uh, and you would think that youtubers or social media people or whatever you call us wouldn't be but actually that's not the case we uh, we find a community with the other uh, content creators and everybody's super helpful because they, they realize this it's not a competition i mean some may view it that way but this is this is like it's not a zero-sum game it's something where everybody gets to you know share their craft and and appreciate what everybody else does and we all do that for the benefit of the people out there hope you learn something from us probably more you from the other channels than you learn from us but maybe you learn something from us <laughs> i hope so yeah it's a good day so anyway Today is the first day of the show, so we're going to walk no, this in. Is, this is not well. It's really industry. The it's first industry day. day. That's this right. Is industry day. Industry day, which is the first day of the show for you know content creators and other industry partners and then industry partners. Yeah, exactly, like the vendors and stuff like that. And uh, so we're going to try and find something. We, we we don't have a strategy. If you'd like to have for us to have a strategy next year, let us know what that strategy might be. But we're just going to go find something really cool and interesting, and hopefully and Mika, we can bring us up. Mika wants to get out of the Mika RV. wants to get out. She's feeling better after the yeah. allergies, so I think she's doing better. So it's day two of the Tampa show. Day one was exciting. Day two continues the excitement because we got something going on here that after last year we wouldn't expect. So we've been here 20, we'll call it 23 hours. We pulled in and we still have no power in the rig. Had to run the generator all night last night. So the contractors are here, but uh, just show you what's going on. This is a little disappointing on the show. So last year, the backstory is last year, they had to refund um, everybody's money because while we weren't affected by power, thank goodness, uh, a lot of the campground, a lot of the fairgrounds were. People didn't have power the whole time they were here. So they changed contractors, reduced the number of sites, 
and 23 hours later, still no power. They're getting close, but here's where we are. So it's day two of the show. Something's changed. Actually, two big things. Well, actually, three things have changed. Okay. The attire. The, the attire. Pam's got the oh. got a down on now. No shorts. Yesterday was shorts. I'm I'm roughing it. I'm just going with the long sleeve and then shorts because I think it's going to warm up. Sun is out. That's good. And we've got power. Oh, we have power. 30 amp power, but we got power. Okay. Tampa Fairgrounds, you guys going to have to get your blank together. together. But. So we're going to do an over and under of um, how long the power actually lasts. So we're going on an hour. We were out of power for 23, actually 25 hours. So let's see. And it was cold. Yeah, it was cold last night. We had, uh, as I said before, it was up at 3 o'clock in the morning trying to get stuff together and trying to keep her from freezing to death. You know, happy wife. Actually, wow. uh, actually unfrozen wife is a happy life. That's a new that's a new term we're coming up with. Anyway, we're going back in. We didn't do oh, a lot. Look where we happen to walk into each. I love it. Right into the Alliance display. I think that was done on purpose, but gosh, that thing is huge. Hang on a second, let me just take this in. Let me take the sun in, warm it up, warm getting some body heat back. And anyway, let's go inside. As we mentioned earlier, we really didn't have a strategy for this year's show. Last year we were so overwhelmed. It seemed like this year for us was more of a series of social get-togethers with other RVers, our viewers, and other RV creators. This year we had only two obligations. One of those was to work the Alliance Owners Booth, which we were happy to do again this year. The other was our very first meetup, which we hosted with five other YouTube channels. We want to thank everyone that came out to support us, and as well as the other channels, Wayward Wags, Brazen Brits, This Is Our Adventure, Our Everyday Getaway, and Downsizing Makes Sense. We were truly humbled to meet you and hear that you appreciate our content and maybe even impacted your life in some small way. Speaking of impacting some people's lives, we used the small entry fee you provided and donated that to our military veterans. More on that later in this video. I guess it's officially day three and I, I know we confused us last year about day two so day three for us is day two for everybody else because we got in on industry day media day so interesting day today we haven't gotten much footage we need to get something yeah if we're gonna give if we're gonna give subscribers something to chew on well we'll we try to get to chew we're on. gonna try to get you something today it's been crazy I mean like we haven't even had a lot of time to get into many of the units yeah. and hopefully that's what we're gonna go do here in just a bit. So. Yeah, we're going to do it today. A uh, fascinating day yesterday, so we'll, we'll post a little bit of this and a separate post on the joint meetup that we did last night with everyday, our Everyday Getaway with uh, <clears throat> Dustin Leslie from Wayward Wags and the Brazen Brits, Downsizing Makes Sense. Uh, uh, this, is our this is our adventure and a lot of fun. I mean, just a great time. We appreciate everybody that came out to have a good time and support not only us, but obviously the other channels as well. Little bit of an issue on the way home. Uh, <laughs> tr the truck troubles continue, but this is not a Ford issue. This was an other driver issue. Uh -huh. So we got rear ended at about 11 30 at night. And uh, I will say this, uh, and not to disparage that a little bit, but uh, the truck fared very well. The other Ford car, tough. Ford That's tough. what it is. The other car did not. I think the other car is totaled, and we have a bump on our bumper. Uh, but that's pretty much it and we do feel sorry that the other gentleman was a young kid uh, first he was so upset he was so upset that. and he was actually very worried about us and so we appreciate that but uh yeah i should have given him a sticker <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding she's he learning was, he was too upset I, I wouldn't have done that at all no and he was very very cordial about it he was very worried about us as well 
and so I appreciate that. We were worried about him, but anyway, it is what it is. It's life on the road, and these trucks take a beating, but they keep on mostly going. So uh, anyway, we're going to head into the show. We're going to go meet a really good, cool YouTube couple that we've known uh, for a long, not known personally, but we've followed, Follow for a long and they have one of the greatest uh, docu-series that I've ever seen called Go North. So we're going to see Tom and Caitlin from Morns on the Move. Yay. So we got to get moving. Let's do it. Okay. So after all that rushing to get over there, we actually did not get a picture with Tom and Caitlin. When we got there, they had a, they had a pretty good line, and they actually were split. And so some people were talking to Tom, some people were talking to Caitlin. So it really wasn't a good opportunity to get a picture of both of them together. Uh, but it was just really fascinating to have a conversation with them about you know about the journey and what they did. So we'll put a link below to their series called Go North, and it was it was an awesome series. They took a uh, a Ford F450 and a Lance truck camper up to Alaska. Alaska, up to the Northern Territory through BC, even up to the Arctic Ocean, and just a very inspirational, very well done uh, documentary. So uh, it's on YouTube, it's also on Prime, uh, Amazon Prime, and I think there's a small charge for that. And from what I understand, they're going to make a movie out of that, but don't know enough details on that. But we'll put a link below uh, to the YouTube uh, series. And if you get some spare time, and if you're just ever thinking about going to Alaska, even if you're not, just, just how well done this was is definitely worthwhile. So again, it's Go North. We'll put a link below. Wish we would have got a picture. All right, well, I had to come back to uh, where the accident happened and just to kind of get some perspective as to um, how long his skid was and how far from the turn that he made where the skid started. And, you know, this is not based on science or anything like that, but so I measured uh, just by walking it off um, that the skid, at least what I can see remaining, and it may have been sort of worn through with some rain and, and cars driving on it, is a minimum 21 feet. So the skid is a minimum of 21 feet. Um, and the skid started about 50 feet, I'd say 50 to 60 feet from the uh, from the turn itself. So you do the math, and I don't know exactly how to do the calculations there, but if he skidded, if he skid 21 feet minimally to hit us, and he only had 60 feet to build up that acceleration, he was he was moving. He had to be moving quickly. I, my guess is that he came through that um, that light, made the left turn, was in a rush, probably was looking at his phone. Again, don't have any proof of that because uh, we were we were moving. We were you know we were getting up to speed, and so it wasn't like we were at a dead stop. And uh, that is just indicative of one he wasn't paying attention, and two he was going at a high rate of speed to have that long of a skid. Uh, to hit us. But I will ask our insurance company to go after his insurance company to at least recover our deductible because uh, that's just not that's just not right. I mean that was clearly his fault and you know after what we've been through with the truck already I just don't want to have to go through with another uh, claim uh, on our insurance uh, as far as you know getting paid from our insurance and I hope our insurance company will go sue his insurance company to at least recover our deductible and recover <clears throat> the money uh, needed to fix uh, our truck and just pay attention out there you know this whole texting and driving thing again I don't I don't know for sure he was doing that but it just it makes it makes total sense he was late to pick up his uh, his wife or girlfriend whatever he said it was he said wife at one point and it was girlfriend later um, and um, I, my guess is he just was in a rush and telling her he was on his way and then he looked up and we were just coming up to speed and he just hit the brakes, like I said, skidded 21 feet. So we'll let insurance companies sort that out. As we mentioned earlier, we had our first public meetup with five other YouTube channels off-site. But we also had a chance to do a meetup on the grounds of the Tampa RV Show, this time with Larry and Alice from Downsizing Makes Sense. Once again, thanks to those who came out. We do promise that we do have some RV-related content, since you know this was an RV show, but we'll cover that in another video. And while this video is the first video for Season 4, we still have some great content from our trip out west in Season 3, so be looking for that. If you've not been to the Florida RV Super Show in Tampa, it's a great time, even if you're not shopping for an RV. Did you forget how old we are? 
As we mentioned before, between the funds collected at the joint meetup that we had and Wayward Wag's monthly donation to a veteran's charity, a check in the amount of $6,150 was presented to the local Elks National Foundation. Well, it was time to leave the Florida Super Show in Tampa, and we had such a great time. We hope to see you there next year, and better yet, we hope to see you out on the road. Thanks for watching.